What's up, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and we are back with another recap over this past weekend. David Benavides for Alexander Vozdik on the Javante Tate Davis Frank Martin card. All right, this was actually the co-main uh, main event. And look, um, this is one of the only two fights of the whole weekend that I, I put a little money down. I, I put some down on Liam Paro to beat Sabrio Matias, and I put some down on Vozdik. Uh, you know, pick it up an upset against David Benavides. Not that I think he's winning. It's just that, you know, I thought it was just a little too wide of him being an underdog. You know, I thought Volzdick, even though he's older, even though he hasn't been that active, it took four years off and all that. I just didn't know how David would do against um, a fighter that is that is bigger than him. You know, at 175, uh, that's a career light heavy. Just wasn't sure how David was going to look. And I thought it was enough to place a bet on Volstick, you know. Um, Benavides should definitely be the favorite to win because he's younger, he's fresher, you know, he's high volume and stuff. So his style is good for an older man. But Volstick, uh, I think people and, and, and just, you know, looking at the comments and looking at the tweets and, and seeing what the boxing fans and the boxing community is saying about this fight. A lot of people are disappointed in Benavides' performance um, because I think a lot of people thought that Benavides was just going to dominate him, and it didn't happen, all right? Um, it started off really well. Like, Benavides, if he was here doing a live commentary, he started off very, very fast. Um, those first three rounds for Benavides were excellent. Um, he comes in. He's, he's got Vosdick fighting on the back foot. And he's attacking a body, and he's high volume, and he's he's throwing hard shots, and it looked really good. It started out really, really good for David. Um, I liked what he was doing. I think maybe roughly around the fourth, fifth round, maybe even six. Um, I started to see a change a little bit. Like he step, he was still winning, but he wasn't as dominant as he was in the first three. You know, I think in the fourth round, Volstick started to pick it up a little better. You know. And I think after probably after the fifth or sixth round, it seemed like David was trying to steal rounds. All right. Um, the volume dropped dramatically. Um, the effectiveness, the, the effectiveness of the punches weren't the same. Didn't have that same pop. He seemed like he started to slow down. It seemed like Volsic started to win the majority of the rounds. In fact, I thought that. The majority of the rounds in the second half, um, Benavides wouldn't start really fighting until after 30, when there was only 30 or 40 seconds left in a round. You know, so he was like kind of stealing rounds, rounds, landing some big shots. But Vozdik was winning the majority of the rounds in the second half. So, um, damn, I, I, I had my scorecard up here. Um, from that night, I don't have it here anymore. Um, so I, I believe the fight was kind of close, you know. Um, regardless of what the judges had it, uh, I think the judges had it wide. One judge had it too wide for each fight for the for most of those cards. You know, Benavides, uh, Gary Russell, Gary Antar Russell. Uh, Carlos Adamas, a, a lot of these fights had a, a extremely, even a Mark Masayo fight, uh, they had one judge that had it too wide. And, um, you know, I think the fight could have been in an 8-4 fight or uh, seven rounds to five for Benavides. You know, I think uh, Benavides is definitely one of the more effective punches, but it became to a point where he was even fighting on his back foot, you know, and Vozdik was doing more work in the second half um but look I, I just want to address a few things the first thing i want to address is that it being uh you know volstake a lot of people feel that volstake pulled his punches um because he really wasn't throwing that many power shots throughout the fight in my response to that, and, and this is one of the few fights that I rewatched. I did rewatch the fight. I think that what Benavides did early on, especially 
attacking the body the way that he did in the first half, I think that had a lot to do with Volstick and him not being as powerful. I think what people slept on going into this fight, and I, I made this point, Volstick gave Better BF his hardest fight. Volstick has always been durable. Um, even in that stoppage loss, if you watch the fight, you would see that a lot of the punishment he took, he seemed more fatigued than hurt. I'm not saying those punches didn't hurt from Better BF. Obviously, they did. He's one of the biggest punchers in the sport. But what I'm saying is the way that he got stopped was different from the way that Yard got stopped. Joe Smith got stopped. Callum, Callum Smith stopped. You know, all the guys that Better BF stopped, it was more in devastating fashion as opposed to a Volstick. And I know even though he's 37 years old right now, and I know some of you that's going to be here, are you caping for Benavides? No, I'm going to get to Benavides in a second. I'm not caping for him. I'm just trying to make sense. And these are points that I made before the fight. Volstick is a tough dude. Um, clearly, he's still in phenomenal form. I don't think he's a fighter he was when he fought Better BF. But you got to understand that that fight is different from all the other fights that Better BF has had. And he stopped everybody. And Volstick and Bivol never fought each other, you know. So at one point, those were the top three guys. At one point, at light heavy. Better be a beats Volstick. Volstick retires. He comes back, pick up two, three quick wins. Not against top level fighters. Um, and now he gets this fight with David, which was David's first test up. David, on the other hand... Um, didn't look as powerful. Why? Because he's fighting not only a bigger man than Demetrius Andrade and Caleb Plant, but he's fighting a durable 175 pounder. A guy that I think is more durable than the majority of fighters up there right now. Still at 37 years old. So Benavides, yes, comes out very fast. You got to also understand... Benavidez getting tired is because he put 100% in round one. The opening round, he's already putting all the pressure that he could. There's no filling out rounds. You know, even in the Andre fight, you know, three, four rounds, you know, he wasn't really going that hard. Plant, you know, Plant arguably won the first four or five rounds, you know. David really started to put it on later in a lot of his older fights. This is the first fight I've seen him come out being so aggressive. Like he was so, uh, you can tell that he was so, um, he really wanted to stop Volzdik and make it quick. And maybe this had to do with him feeling like he had to, um, you know, prove to the people that he's a top dude. Or maybe be, it's because he was confident in their sparring session that they had years ago maybe he didn't have that much respect maybe it's because he was familiar with this fighter um maybe it's because he just felt good in coming in at 175 but all i know is that he started faster than when what we're used to seeing you know even fights like ronald ellis and 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 and, and um uh, i mean i could go down a list i mean i've seen so many of his fights at this point um you know, I, did I say Ronald? Yeah, Ronald Ellis, uh, even Anthony Durrell. There are fights where the pacing was different, whereas he started out fast. So him being burnt out halfway through the fight, there's no surprise there because you're high volume and you're punching yourself out. In the meantime, this guy, Volzdick, took so many body shots early and they were clearly hurting him. I mean, look at his body. You know, look at the redness on both sides. He was hurt. And that's going to affect not only your, your punch output, but the pop that you are going to have. So people feel that, oh, he's pulling his punches. He, he clearly went in there to lose. I mean, if, you, if you're if you hard on the conspiracies, then fine. If that's your way of looking at it. I'm looking at it like this guy started out landing heavy, heavy body shots in the opening round. 
And I think that had a lot of effect on Volstick and his performance, especially as a 37-year-old. All right. Um, overall, I still think Benavides did enough to win. Um, but it wasn't that impressive of, of, of a performance. What I think is I think he needs another fight at 175 if he doesn't take the winner of Bivol and Better BF. He should be taking another top fight. And if Dave Morrell actually beats Hot Rod in a couple of months, which is a very good fight to me, um, he should be fighting Hot Rod. He should be, I mean, he should be fighting uh, uh, Dave Morrell or the winner of that fight. He should be fighting the winner of that fight. You know, I mean, look, David has had some good fights, especially the last three, all respectable to me. Um, you know, I thought all these last three were good fights. Andre, Plant. Um, and I figured that Bozik was going to be more difficult than both. Um, I think he should just keep going in that pattern, in that direction. If he is going to go back down to 168, it would be disappointing unless it's Canelo. If you go down to 168 to fight Canelo, it makes a whole lot of sense. But if you go down to 168 to fight anybody else, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, Turkey Alishi already put it out there that he wants him to fight the winner of Bivol and Better BF. So there's going to be a lot of money there. So what would be the point of going back down to 168 outside of fighting Canelo Alvarez? There is none. Unless you feel like you're not confident based on this performance. If you go back down to 168, it just looks like you are running from the guys that are your size. You want to have a size advantage you want to continue to have that advantage that's the criticism that, criticism that you get um that you've gotten over the years and even though there are some good fights there at 168 still you already moved up you already passed the test um Volstick is 37 and yes he was inactive but are we sure that he's still not one of the top fighters at 175 that's what Volstick will have to go and prove for himself, all right? But the criticism that Volstick is getting or that David is getting for not stopping a Volstick at this point is not fair because we don't know how good Volstick did. Once upon a time, there were people saying that they thought Volstick was better than Bivol and better BF. Well, he fought better BF and lost, so he's not better than better BF. But Volstick never got a f shot at any of the other type, top guys outside of Adonis Stevenson. So how old and how bad or how plastic is Volstick? We really don't know. All I know is that I saw a guy that was young and go into his body very, very, you know, fresher, younger, just coming up to the weight and outworking him by going to the body. You know, so... I'm not sitting here completely trying to write off Volstick. I would like Volstick to fight one of these guys like uh, Joshua Buatzi or Anthony Yard or, or Callum Smith or, you know, one of these guys out here just to see, is he still in it? Is he still in it? Maybe he retires. I don't know what he's going to do. But the same with Benavides. This, even in between now and your opportunity of fighting Bivol and better be of winning, winner um if you can't get canelo there's plenty of other options at 175 going back down to 168 is just it's just not a good look you know and i would definitely be one of his critics if he were to go and do that if it's not canelo if it's canelo i understand the money the pay-per-views you know um just your legacy is a legacy fight for anybody that fights canelo but as far as him just going down there and fighting, I don't know, Christian Imbili. And, and, and again, these are good fights. Or Jaime Munguia. They're good fights, but you got good fights like that on that level at 175. You don't need to go back down. You know? So, anyway, um, maybe Cano saw the fight and said, you know what? I'll take this guy. You know, I see holes in his game. I see ways I can exploit his, his flaws. And maybe he'll take the fight now. Who knows? You know, sometimes you got to look bad for certain fighters that want to fight you. But as far as him moving down to 168 off that performance, 
it makes me feel like are right, you're just running from guys that's your size and you want to have a size advantage in your fights you know so i'm a little bit of both you know i think volstick still has more to offer than what people gave him credit for leading into this fight but i also think that benavides um burned himself out and just wasn't that good in the second half and if 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 he is to come down go back down to 168 it, it exposes him a little bit because it, it it will show that he wants to have a size advantage and again that's if he fights anyone outside of canelo alvarez all right so anyway that's my thoughts he still has time because better be of ambival fight is in november i don't know if he's going to wait all the way until that fight happens um maybe he should have one more fight um what i would like for him to do is fight the winner of hot rod and um and and dave morell you know because dave morell is is one of those guys that people feel that you're running from and when you moved up to 175 he moved up right with you <laughs> and it's an easy fight to make you know i mean neither one of you are champs now you know um, so I would love to see that and other fights at 175. But we can't jump the gun with these conclusions because there's still fights that can prove that Volstick is still in this. Or maybe he is washed up. And it can prove that Benavides is really good at 175. Maybe that Volstick was just not the guy to stop. All right. So anyway, that's my thoughts on those to opponent those two fighters and David Benavides moving forward. Hope he stays at 175. And let's his Canelo. That's my point. Stay at 175. Don't back don't go back down from Mungia or Christian Imbali or whoever. Alright, so um subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, share the video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.